Hello, good afternoon, and welcome back to the Fishlocker Outing for Adventure. It is an incredible terrain, isn't it? It's like the surface of Mars. Yet we've had a long day today wrecking out marks all over the island. And for one reason or another, whether or not it be too much ground swell, too much wind, not enough depth, too much weed, or you can't fish there. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a few places where there's restrictions on fishing as well. On top of the fact of needing a license, you also, you aren't allowed to fish from the public beaches on the hours of daylight. I think that's so that anglers don't clash with swimmers and things like that. So from seven o'clock at night until daybreak, you're all right fishing. Well, I hope we have now found a mark. We're just about to scramble down to it. It is stunning down there, isn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna make my way down the track there. I thought I'd talk to you up here before I slip and break my neck. Yeah, this, this rod bag here has been an absolute godsend for this. I've never had one before. I've always just just lashed them together and put them in my back. So yeah, that's been an absolute godsend. So, let's go. Tom's just managed to get set up. Tom's got down there faster than me. I swear he's half Billy Goat. I'll speak to you when you get down on the beach. Tom's managed to get set up before I am, mainly because I just fanny about a lot. He's got himself set up. It's funny that this isn't just a problem in the UK. We've got set up, Tom's casted his baits out. And they've come and anchored up, literally, they've just literally turned up and anchored up right on top of where one of Tom's baits are. You could honestly, you could hit it with your leg, couldn't you? Well, there obviously isn't that much space around here, is there? Well, it's not like they couldn't have picked anywhere else. Instead, they've, they've just come and anchored up right in front of us. Yeah. Never mind, on wood. Yeah. The uh, key chocolate really quickly through the rods and the reels that you're using, and the, the tackle. Yeah, uh, both the reels are the same. Plain Clash 8000s, same what I use in the UK for skate, things like this. Sturdy reels, what? nice big handle for comfort and grip. What braid have you got on there? 65 pound braid, straight through. So you haven't got a mono leader on like I have, no, you just fish straight no, through? It's all I'm used to, for me, pros and cons for each, keep it simple. Both rods, fairly stiff rods, um, 14 foot, helps just keep the braid out of the surface. Yeah, I noticed there, instead of having them low, you've got your rod yeah. tips high to keep the tops out of there. Brought the bottom cups as high as I can, try and keep it out of that surface. Yeah. If there's any weed there. Uh, both rods have quite supple tips quite soft obviously for you know playing bigger fish casting baits we don't destroy the baits or rip hooks out of fish and that's about it on the rods really quite simple um, one rod is on a pulley panel a hundred pound rig body hundred pound snood oh so you're up to a pulley bay guy yep and then what have you got there they're four rows uh, four row yeah uh, five ounce lead four row hooks Flash down, and the rod on the left is a free running ledger just in the surf here. So Perfect. Fingers crossed. Keep it simple, eh? <laughs> I can't believe them there in that boat. Alright, oh, to mention is uh, we are on a beach, and it's slightly rocky on one side. We are going to be fishing at night, so naturally in the UK, I'll be wearing a life jacket. But here, I've got my, my auto belt. All that does is it acts like a life belt. You pull it and it flates a ring around you. I've been I've been trailing out on this trip because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of lure fishing. And sometimes when you're wearing a big belt, it can catch when you're casting. Yeah, this has been great. Let's get set up. The rigs that I'm using are mirrored to Tom's, just with slightly different bait. On one side, I've got a sliding ledger, and I've baited that with a piece of garfish. And that's mounted on a 6 o and on the other rod I've got a pulley rig and that's with some frozen sardines all lashed up now the pulley rig one is going to be going out as far as I can get it whereas the running ledger one is going to be going just behind the waves
this has kind of been like a running thing with me and Tom. The crabs round here, we've not been getting any trouble with the crabs on the baits. Right? We've not been getting any trouble with the crabs eating the baits. So like we're bringing, leaving baits out for some time is like 45 minutes of coming back and just a few fish are pecked on them. All the crabs seem to be living right up in all the rocks. Up around here. And they're not like the crabs we get in the UK, we've found three different types. The uh, little hairy one that like lives right in the crannies. There's, a, there's two flat species, like a green one and a red one. And they are fast. Like they are fast. <laughs> Me and Tom have been trying to run around and catching them the past couple of days. I finally caught one. I kind of dazzled it with my headlamp and then ran up and pinned it. But yeah, I've got it in my bait tub. The problem with them is they're used to like ocean rollers hitting them. Look at that. Yeah, these are used to like ocean rollers hitting them. So they're flattened, flattened on their back, flattened on their legs, so they can sit like flat to a rock, like that. See how flat their legs are? Oh. So when a wave comes and hits, they just kind of cling on. Because of that, they're really hard to get hold of. Look, you can't tuck your hands behind them. Let go, let go. <laughs> I'm gonna get a photo of this for James. Yeah, they're cool, them. Just got a shout from down the way and there was Tom flashing his head like, like crazy trying to get my attention. <laughs> He's um in need of assistance. Yeah. What type of bite did it give? Did it just scream straight off or was it? No, a real big slack liner at first. It's the first one I've had to do with that. Almost like a classic skate. Big slack liner. Put my glove on and just ripped it off. You said that it was kiting about high in the water. I did uh, get a bit hopeful. It was something a little different. Uh, Why is it just stuck to the bottom now? It's to ground. Okay. What I don't understand is how this uh, rock edge works. I don't know if it's on a steady gradient for quite a while or if it's... Uh, I think I was bouncing a little jig around down there a minute ago and it's sand right to your feet. Right, so as soon as you get some big rocks. As soon as you get past these rocks here. What, I reckon it's just sand. There goes 20 minutes hard work. <laughs> Any line that you gained, you've just lost it again. A completely different angle fighting them fighting them from a beach like this isn't it because obviously instead of it being up and down it's 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 out you can't get the can't get the leverage because they just suck to the bottom you're just dragging it in along the sand until it decides it wants to leave i think one thing that i mean it's same with the skate as well I think maybe it's a personal preference but when you're playing these bigger things i don't like to tighten my drag really tight if you use your thumb. Yeah, because when it starts to go, you can just relax you off with your hand and let yeah. it go. If you rather than twisting and untwisting. And if you lock your drag up so you can actually move the fish and bring it in, if it runs, you'll just snap. The weakest point will go, whether that's tearing them. Yeah, whether it's your hook, your line, your rod, your, yeah, you're right. If you manage it with your thumb, it's... You're going to you know, pump on huge, that. Huge. <laughs> Who needs a gym? Waving at you. Managed to dislodge it off the bottom and it's just kiting around in the tide now. Big fish, mate. That is a big fish. I stick this rod here. Right. This is where I slip straight at water. I've got rolled at the dangerous end down here. Look. See the size of that? 
size of that there. That's its stinger, that's obviously where it gets its name. I'm assuming this is going to be a roof tail by how many thorns and spikes it's got all over it. I'm just going to try and turn it round to be able to get the hook out. Yeah, that's... See where it's been caught before. Out there in a second. There it goes. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Intermittent rain showers. Right. I followed the tide down, so I'm pulling it down and I was onto the beach. The tide's turned and we've had like an hour and a half of the flood, so I'm retreating back up the rocks. Yeah, eventually, I'm going to have to retreat right back up the rocks to where I started from. The bits I'm knocking out at the minute are, this is what's left of the little bit of the bonito that Tom caught. Look how much juice and scent's coming out of that. That white skate, what Tom's just had there, that was on another piece of bonito. Well, Tell you what, she's well, away. Yeah. Well done, mate. Perfect. So yeah, that's, that's one thing that we've definitely learnt from this trip, is that the frozen baits, you might catch the odd fish, but they just don't cut it when compared to fresh baits. But fresh scenty mackerel or, or that bonito, um, the majority of the fish that we've caught actually have been on either bonito or fresh mullet. Um, there's the baits, this is what I was saying about the crabs. This bait had been out there for 45 minutes. It's almost immaculate. So yeah, you, crabs aren't the problem. We're just, it's just no, no fish moving. Fingers crossed though, now that the tide's flooding, they're gonna come in on the feed and we'll pick them up. My baits, I can't really show you where I'm fishing because it's, it's pitch black. I could I could point to somewhere and you'd never be able to see it. Yeah, I've got one bait, my running ledger bait, my just my, my free line running ledger bait. It's just at the back of the waves. So if there's anything cruising around just by the gutter, that's gonna get that. And my, my uh, pulley panel rig is out at about 80, 90 yards. Just trying to cover my bases. But yeah, I'm, I'm after big fish. Didn't bother with the scratching rigs today. I just want big fish. All or nothing. I was fishing just down the way there and I got a shout from Tom. There's another bite there. Another fish. Right. Tom has managed to find an angel shark. Them eyes are incredible, aren't they? Watch out though, because it's got some, some gnashes in there. Yeah, that is incredible, Tom. Well done. Yeah, Bit you off right at the end, did it? Right at the end, I just wet arm just grabbed it. Yeah. Hail Mary grab. Fantastic. <sighs> right, I tell you what, we'll, we'll take it just down the ways there, because we'll see how solid he is. Yeah. We'll be able to get a tag in that. Incredibly small eyes. Yeah. Oh, well done, mate. Right. Let's get it over there in that rock roll. Right, we've taken this, taken this angel shark down to somewhere that we can release it. I spoke to the scientists at NOAA before I came out and said these were a possible bycatch and they said they'd love me to try and tag a few of them so that's tag number 413326 413326 and how long was it sorry? 107 107 Slipping back now. Yeah, 
There he goes. Tell you what, incredibly well camouflaged, aren't they? Absolutely stunning. Well, this wasn't supposed to happen. This is one of those situations that I try and explain to folks. I was like, the amazing experience of fishing is best when it's shared. <laughs> We're spread out by about 100 yards. And I was concentrating, I was like, Tom's been absolutely thrashing me this session. I need to, I need to pull some on the bag. So like a bite, I'm like, ooh, I'm ready, I'm ready. Snapped into it, brought a fish in, shouting him down. He come running down here, I was like, mate, 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 guess what I've caught? And he went, I don't care what it is, man's better than yours. <laughs> We've managed to catch a brace of fish here. We both caught a fish at exactly the same time. And both of them, are, are on their own, are a wow fish. Tom has caught probably a four and a half to five pound coach breed. Yeah. Tom's caught a coach bream. It is an absolute stunner of a fish. And man is a white bream. That is amazing. But yeah, man took uh, a strip of bonito. Same here. Yeah, and a strip of bonito, so. A six or. That is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Likewise. <laughs> Good and bro. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's pouring down but I don't care. To anybody who's not who's not into fishing, who's not into doing this type of thing, that would just seem like a set of fish. But that is that is a brace of fish to die for. That is fantastic that. The teeth. The teeth are something quite strange as well, aren't they? Look. Like little paper teeth. Yours actually, them coaches when they get a little bit bigger. He's already starting to get them. They get like, like a, set of, yeah, get a set of fangs. fangs. You can see them coming through. What a really stunning cool. eye. Yeah. We'll get a couple of photos of these and we'll get them back. Ready? Straight back. Like a perch. There it is. It's been playing with that for a while. I've got a loose drag on it. So that if it picks it up, it wants to play with it, it can. But so it's been playing with that for a while. Well done Tom, swing it in. Have to tail it, so I'm going to put put the camera down. No, mate. Yeah, I'll just tail it out. Tom had had a bait in the water for all of two minutes. Is it another meal? Little tiny eyes, but I tell you what, they've got some rare gnashes inside of there. Let's get the T-bad off real quick. We'll get a tag in it, we'll get it put back. Before I came out here, I spoke to some of the marine scientists at NOAA. And I said there was a possible chance that these are bycotch. And they said they would love it if I tried to tag some. So as you can see, all I've done is I've measured it there. That's the fork length, it's 104 centimetres. And I'm just going to put a NOAA tag in it. Those teeth in there. You see them? Got around some of his. Got around some of his teeth. There you go. Here. That's the tag number. You see it? Yep. 
these have got a different a different shape this is their belly cavity here still it goes all the way back whereas with blue shark or paw beagle you tag it up here with these you have to find where it's just meat so it's just in here We'll get him dropped back now. Let me come round onto there and I'll film it from there. It's resting here on this rock. See, it just sat there. There he goes. Straight through to bite your line off. <laughs> <laughs> Fished it out for as long as I could, but it was just absolutely lashing it down by in bits. I don't know what you can see, but yeah, it's pouring down. We've been absolutely drenched. We um, enjoyed looking around, finding some new marks. <laughs> yeah, them uh, them two brain were were something special to remember. Uh, but yeah, it's a mixed bag. Considering that we'd never fished a mark before, yeah, fantastic. A lovely ending to it. I hope you enjoyed joining us. Hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.